Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 downtown Pioneer Plaza in the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Beautiful downtown Honolulu. We have got actually one of the uh, founding families of the hotel industry here in Hawaii. Um, I kind of refer to them as uh, the Trump of Waikiki, but <laughs> people might have a different opinion of that. Uh, Andre tends to be a little, uh, uh, not shy, but I guess uh, a little bit, uh, you know, unboisterous. So, uh, but I'm, I'm very proud to have uh, Andre Tanabouet, Jane Tanabouet, and their daughter, Cecilie Nisbet Tanabouet here today uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, well, walking down memory lane about the, the hotel industry and, and how the Tanabowitz and the family got involved in this but you, you've been in, in Hawaii for a long long time. Uh, all my life Reg. Yeah, Little uh, boy. Yeah well and, and even before then your, your father. Uh, my father and in fact going back to my grandfather who uh, uh, first uh, landed here in 1909. 1909. That's a long time ago. It that is. was before my time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but he's been involved uh, in the business in one way or another in a while. Your your grandparents, your father, and now you. Yes, correct. Yeah, and uh, how did uh, how just real briefly how did all this come about? Um, you know, it's far too long a story to give right now. But essentially, um, my grandfather was an architect and a contractor. Uh, built apartments um, um, and residences around uh, the city of Honolulu. And um, then my mother uh, grew up in that business, so she was exposed to the apartment business. And then after World War II, she decided she wanted to maybe start a small hotel. So took uh, an apartment, uh, a couple of little apartments that she and my father had purchased in Waikiki and converted that into a little 14-room cottage-style wow. hotel. A real boutique type of hotel. Yes, for the <laughs> day, we could call it that, yes. <laughs> Very good. And when was that about? 1948. 1948. So you've been in the business for a long time. A long time. All right. I was uh, a little boy in 1948 and uh, uh, would help. I can still remember uh, helping, uh, helping the family in those days. Very good. And so you were in the business and you eventually became more of a hoteler. You're, you're, is that the proper way to say it? Hotelier? Hotelier. <laughs> right, yes. All right. Um, and, and you were doing that for a while. And then I guess at some point you met Jane. That's correct. Yes. You know, and how did that happen? <laughs> oh, well, we were both in the hotel business. Uh, Jane was um, uh, an executive out at what was then called the Kahale Hilton Hotel. Mm. And I was doing my hotel business in Waikiki. And... Uh, couple of fellow hoteliers we met and uh, um, the rest as they say is history. Very good. And Jane, is that how you recall it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Very good. So you were, you were working out at the, uh, the Kahala Hilton yes, when you and met Andre. Andre. Yeah, and Andre spent a whole lot of time sitting out in the employee parking behind the hotel at the loading dock waiting for me every night wow. because my hours were late and uh, I was determined to do a good job. That and sounds like uh, a commitment. And so he <laughs> made the real commitment and those hours at the loading dock were long remembered by other employees who were coming and going and Andre was always sitting there right. waiting. And then you, you actually, um, and I know you had a double major in college and, and the, uh, can you talk about that for briefly for a, a minute? Well yes, I started out, I was interested in the food and beverage business and I started out life, my first job was as a pot washer and a summer job when I was about 12 or 13 and I got promoted actually to a dishwasher the following summer and gradually a, I got must have done a good job <laughs> 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 I, got, I, I, I gradually got involved in the cooking in the kitchen so at any rate I, I went to Cornell uh, University and was accepted in the college of what was then home economics which is now human ecology and majored in foods and nutrition and institutional management and I quickly discovered that I really enjoyed rather than the hospital side and taking care of nutrition and foods and service on the hospital side of life um, and the scientific side that I would far prefer the hotel side and so I went and talked with the dean of the hotel school and was able to uh, do a double major and have a major in restaurant management and hotels in the hotel school and graduated with that 
Uh, so you've, you've had that hotel business in your blood for a while, too. Yes, and my parents also had a small inn, um, not as, as Andre's, but uh, on Cape Cod in Massachusetts, where I grew up, they had a small inn of about 10 rooms uh, that just operated in the summer season because they were both school teachers during the year. Mm -hmm. But this they had as, as, uh, as, and so I grew up in that anyway. Uh, during my teenage years, uh, we uh, cleaned rooms and did and, all and that what, sort of thing. what eventually brought you to Hawaii? I was hired my senior year at Cornell when I was in the hotel school part uh, by Hilton International Hotels. And uh, they wanted me to work for them, but they didn't know just doing what. And uh, they were very determined that I, I should uh, stay with their program and uh, head me down to New York at times. I had a wonderful job in Boston temporarily. And uh, one day they called and, and they said, uh, uh, well, it was going to be either the Istanbul Hilton or the Kahala Hilton, whichever was finished first. Well, let me think about that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, for, 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 uh, for all parties sitting here uh, in, on, on either side of me, it turned out to be the Kahala Hilton. And uh, that was finished a few weeks ahead of the Istanbul Hilton, so they sent me here as manager of the Hala Terrace restaurant. And that was my first job here. Oh, super. And then uh, I guess what, what about what time was that? What, you, what year was that? Right when the hotel opened, 1963, 64. 63, 64. All right. So that's uh, brand spanking new. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Very yes. good. And then uh, I guess, Cecily, mm -hmm. you, uh, you also have some hotel in your blood too, right? Well, my brother and I grew up in the business and we started out, I remember my brother cleaned ashtrays. Right. And I started out in the laundry department, so right. we learned. I guess starting about ten or eleven. He was a lot. He was a lobby cleaner. You were yes. in the housekeeping department. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. So you grew up in that environment, and we did didn't did you get a, a degree in it too? I so I went to Cornell as well, and I actually started out and graduated from the hotel school. Very good. And then my mother and I went on to have a restaurant on the mainland. So we've kept the restaurant and side kept going. It going. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So I. I, I I know we probably have enough to talk about for a whole additional show <laughs> about some of the experiences you've been through since the 50s and the 60s and how things have evolved and changed over the years. Uh, but you, you actually, when, after you came together, then things started to gel and, and things started taking off and, and you end up uh, being very active and very involved in the, the entire industry in Hawaii. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's you know, you look back on those times and you don't think about what's happening. You just keep moving and growing and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And what started as a, a fairly modest business, well, not, not so small. Uh, my first, I did my first little hotel on my own when I was 19. <coughs> 19 and you yeah. did your own hotel. Right. That's um, impressive. Up on Cleghorn Street while I was attending the University of Hawaii. Started that in my sophomore year at the University <laughs> of Hawaii. And uh, then subsequently... Uh, my first really major endeavor was building the uh, Pacific Beach Hotel with 360 mm -hmm. rooms uh, overlooking Waikiki Beach. That was 1968. So you broke ground and actually built that one? Yes. Wow. From the ground up. Very good. That was, that was quite exciting. I would imagine, yes. yeah. <laughs> but you also, you had, you've had your, your fingerprints on a lot of the different hotels in Waikiki. Yes. I... Um, I you know what, I'm not even sure that I try to count, but it's it's in the many dozens of hotels. I mean, I drive around Waikiki and I remember this one and okay, my mm -hmm. company operated mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. one and um, <coughs> uh, we were involved doing a transition and a turnover here and we took this uh, sick hotel and made it into a profitable mm -hmm. one. So there, mm -hmm. there's a, a long, uh, uh, interesting list of uh, different projects that I've been involved with. Right. I, I know that I um, had an opportunity to do a little bit of research and I saw a, a document that showed a whole lot of different properties, that, not only on Oahu, but also on the neighbor islands. Yes, correct. So you, you and when did you start to expand to the neighbor islands? In uh, the late 70s, uh, acquired the first neighbor island property and then uh, I moved fairly quickly after that time. Waikiki was always the hub. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, the keystone in the arch, as it were. But um, uh, the neighbor islands were an interesting opportunity, and actually, in some ways, it turned out really well because 
um, the talent pool in Waikiki was broader and deeper than it was on the neighbor islands. It's generally the case. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was in a position to bring some resources to some of these uh, neighbor island properties that might not have been available otherwise. So that, that well, worked well. That, that actually could do quite well for the neighbor islands because it could bring them up a notch and, and more productive, more profitable. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's and, great. Uh, yeah, it's very gratifying to see. And it was nice working with owners and um, uh, hearing them say afterwards, you know, we weren't sure what you can do, but, you know, after a year or two, they say, wow, this, mm -hmm. this is really nice. That's we, good. Uh, we appreciate uh, the difference. And it's a job well done. They, they, it's always nice to hear that. Yes. Yeah. And Jane, have you involved with, with Andre and working with him during this time? And we, I mean, how, what was your role? Well, actually, um, the week we were married was the week he broke ground on the Pacific Beach Hotel. <laughs> so we postponed our honeymoon for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was a, but um, uh, basically speaking, I stayed working for other uh, people. I, I always felt that perhaps the best thing for a marriage wasn't to work directly together. Mm -hmm. And I said if I ever did work for his company oh. that I, I would not work directly under him. I would work under some other division head or something. Sure. Which is eventually what I did do. I worked for uh, Western International Hotels after leaving the Kahala after five years there. And um, I helped uh, I went out uh, and helped develop Makaha when that mm. was under construction, wow. hired all the staff for it, and set up all the dining rooms and so forth and so on, and, and trained uh, the housekeepers and <laughs> the, whole, the whole deal. That, that's and a long uh, commute every day. Well, it was a long commute, and that's before Chino's Highway was built. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, it was a, a long haul, but it, it worked out, and uh, we successfully opened it, unfortunately. Um, it has had a, a tragic history, but um, that is the way of the tourist business. One never mm -hmm. knows. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, Andre and I, uh, eventually I came to work for him and, and was general manager of uh, two of his hotels, the Waikiki Beach Tower when uh, that opened, and, um, and then moved over to the Waikiki Beach side when that opened. Uh, and. Uh, the beach tower was constructed. Andre um, put that together, and he was the developer for that. And um, and and then the beach side he purchased and uh, redeveloped that one. Mm -hmm. And so I went on and was was general manager of both of those, and, and uh, stayed in the business uh, at the corporate level as the years went on Very in uh, human relations and and community relations and so forth. But always kept a hand in the development of the hotels and, and uh, the uh, in, in the renovation of hotels. Right. Uh, and it's, go ahead. I was going to say, I gave her some of the tough ones, like the Beach Tower. That was a complicated, difficult one, a lot of <laughs> moving parts. And <coughs> what Jane didn't say is there was another manager in there, bless his heart, nice fellow. After about six months, I could see this was, you know, a little out of his uh, mm -hmm. league. So I said, Janie, how about... Uh, Taking this on, looked at him, said, sure. And she did a great job. Very good. Absolutely knocked the ball out of the park. Well, that, that's great accolades. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, um, you know, we're, we're, talk we're covering a lot of ground, but we're going to have to take a short break. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we're talking with the, the Tenabuet family and, and how they have been involved with the hotel industry in Hawaii for 50 years. Uh, we'll be right back in about 60 seconds. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you excited about my new show, which is called Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. And it's going to be on Think Tech Hawaii from downtown Honolulu on Tuesday afternoons, 5 p.m. And we're going to talk about uh, to make architecture more inclusive on the islands, which is, what hu which is one of the definitions of humane, which is being tolerant of uh, you know, many people of nature, of many other influences. So we're going to have some great guests, like today's guest, for example, uh, my collaborator, David Rockwood, who is the author of the awesome 
uh, manifestation of uh, humane architecture in the background. So see you on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. I look forward to. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here with the Tana Bowets, and we're going through a little bit of a, a walk down memory lane here of the hotel industry for the past 50 years. Uh, and Cecilia, I just want to ask you, during all this time that, that Andre and Jane were doing all these really neat, fascinating things, what were you doing in the business? Well, as I mentioned, I started out folding laundry, went to the hotel school, majored in hotel management, and during that time I went to work in Germany for six months as part of my schooling um, in the hotel business to work on my German skills. But there I did a rotation, worked in housekeeping, worked at the front desk, the concierge department. Once I graduated, I was hired by Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts mm. and went to be an assistant manager at the Pierre Hotel in wow, New York City. That's a great organization. Um, a strong union property that was um, hard work, eye-opening. I worked there for a year, and then I actually ran the Northeast um, sales office for Aston Hotels wow. and Resorts. And I worked and made sales calls to all the travel operators, um, both agents and wholesalers. Wow. Was there a lot of travel involved in those days? Throughout New England, that was where I was based, and I did a lot, and really, I think, brought the Aloha spirit, brought chocolate-covered yeah. macadamia nuts, wore <laughs> lays, wore moo-moos. I good. really enjoyed that. So you were an ambassador of Aloha. I was. <laughs> I, I really felt I could have almost worked for the Visitors Bureau, but I was really pleased to be promoting Aston Hotels and Resorts. Yeah, very good. So it's great to have that family business. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I guess over the decades, you must have seen an awful lot of change in the industry. Uh, you know, what, what are some of the more significant changes that you've noticed here recently? Ooh, you know, it, it really has changed. I started, let's put it this way, visitor arrivals in the early 60s were less than a million people. Wow. Last year, some people may know that we hit almost 9 million. So, just from the standpoint of raw numbers, fantastic. In raw numbers, I just would like to insert that in 1967, in December, early December of 67, the entire state was aware of and celebrating, and certainly the tourism industry, the one millionth traveler to that to Hawaii, tourist to Hawaii that year, in, on a, at a certain day in December. And that was met, met that the couple that were designated the one millionth traveler were met with great <laughs> festivity and public <laughs> relations. It right. was all over the state, and that was 1967, just the end of the year, the one um, million. 1967, and now we're, we're hitting pretty yeah, high Yeah, we were, just, we were just shy of nine million last nine year. Million. I expect this year we'll uh, break that number. And that was a record, from what I understand, for yes, 2016. Yes, yes, correct. So the industry in raw numbers has grown tremendously, but in many other ways, the industry has changed and grown. Uh, the distribution channels, where we get our clients from, I mean, when I was very young, our entire market was made up basically of Americans traveling mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. We have now evolved to be a global destination. We have people literally from all over the world. And I'm sometimes in a hotel lobby, and I will routinely hear people speaking French and German, obviously Japanese, Chinese, Korean, mm -hmm. occasionally even some Russian. I know a few words of Russian. Oh, and there's some Russian tourists chatting in Russian. So it's wonderful that we're able to draw from the world. We are wonderfully regarded by people from around the world. And the benefit of that is if one market hits a little economic rough yep. patch, yep we can offset it with others. So Diversification is a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And the ease of air travel today is great. So so from that standpoint, it's it's really exciting. Right. And, and I guess gratifying. you touched on the marketing piece, and, and I guess the internet. I mean, that's got to be a, a, a game changer of sorts. Massive game changer, absolutely. The internet and a whole host of different technological pieces that just um, we move really almost, by contrast with the old days, at warp speed. Yeah, well, you know, and, and to, to the point of diversification, the Internet allows marketing and branding to take place a lot easier than it used to be, I, oh, would, yes. I would think. Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. There's no question about it. And it's created a whole new management uh, department That's in right. hotels, revenue management, which yeah. is yeah. a whole new yeah, area. It's, it's, it's a whole different you know, technology exactly. that, that if you do it well, can really pay back. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, and I guess uh, the mode of travel. I mean, transportation itself. I mean, with the uh, the ability of being able to get from, say, California to Honolulu in, in four hours or so. Yes. It, it, it makes it a little bit more easier, uh, in a way, to get here and, and have a vacation and then leave, and it doesn't take a whole day or two or a week to get here. Well, early days, of course, there were only ships, but in the 50s, uh, propeller aircraft would take roughly between 10 and 11 hours from here to the West Coast. Not the most comfortable ride. <laughs> no, <laughs> not the most comfortable <laughs> ride. You're correct. So all of those uh, pieces really help our industry in a wonderful way. It's, it's, and, and that's another one of those game changers. And now the efficiency that the, uh, the aircraft have in, in fuel consumption uh, allows to bring the price down. You know, yes. and, the, and the planes, of course, the occupancy in the planes are getting more. And, yes. and so it's, it's more reasonably priced, I guess, to get here. In inflation-adjusted terms, airfares are measurably cheaper than they once were, really. So those are all the different components that they got us to these record numbers yes. and this worldwide recognition, which yes. is great for Hawaii. Uh, where do you see all of this going? What do you think the future looks like? Uh, you know, I'm hopeful and optimistic that our industry will continue to grow. It won't be double-digit growth. It's going to be a more moderate rate of growth but I think it will continue to grow and my uh, guess is it's going to be a little more of a quality visitor experience. It's uh, going to be uh, more thoughtfully driven than it was in the past, not the willy-nilly kind of thing. So I feel pretty good about that. Almost like a niche marketing type. There's going to be different properties, I would think, that's going to be focusing on different experiences. Yes. You know, Very and, and and I think you know some of those experiences could be the nature lovers' experience. Yes. you know, and a wellness experience. Right, that's exactly and it. And what's nice is when your industry is large enough, we can have a diversity of types of hotels with different types of experiences, mm -hmm. so that travelers can go online, take a look. What is it they're looking for? What kind of experience? So we can we can provide something to them in almost every different area that they're looking for. So it's really it's really nice from that standpoint. And, and what's nice about that is that it, it builds in a reason for a return visitor. Absolutely. Like they can come in and have one experience and then they can come back in a year and have yes. another experience. And yes. Yeah, it's, it's a built-in obsolescence, if you will, where you have to just keep buying that product right. over and over again. That's right, yes. Yeah. And, and how are the Tana Boets going to tap in? How, where, where do you see opportunities for, for you? I mean, you're, you're still young. You've still you got a lot of years to be taking advantage of this. So, Well, that's, it's a good question. What I enjoy doing now, I, um, I enjoy uh, moving around, in particular Waikiki, and looking for underutilized opportunities. Mm. Hotels that are ready for a, uh, a cleanup, a reposition, and basically, I'm thinking of um, you've got to do renovation, you've got to do new marketing, maybe change management, and there's still an opportunity to add measurable value to the asset and to provide a vastly improved experience for the guest in the hotel. And as a part of that, we're going to be creating more jobs for our people. Wow. Interesting, and, and you've got some talent right here next to you that can oh, help with that. I have <laughs> a great amount of talent right at home, yes. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I'm so very, I am so lucky in that regard. Well, and, and, you know, it sounds almost like we're, we're talking about, you know, turnaround situations where you get to go in and find these, these properties and, oh, yes. and help turn them around and get them back profitable exactly. again. It's, it's been so much fun to do that. Uh, taking a, a hotel, for example, that... Maybe in one year, early 90s, one hotel had, oh, earnings of about 500000 Finally persuaded the Japanese owners to let me take it over from them, gave them an attractive guarantee. And at the end of uh, five years, we had moved it from 500000 to just over $5 million. Wow. Yes. They were very pleased. I would imagine so. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, we should have them on here to do a testimony. <laughs> we get to some more of that work. That's great. Yeah, and Cecilia, you're, you're currently living on the mainland. 
I live right. in Chapelville, North Carolina. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So with all this activity and everything, you might have to come back someday and help out with the family business here. I, I would be glad to. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be doing <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like exciting times ahead. Yes. So um, now you mentioned Waikiki. Do you see opportunities like this maybe on the, the neighbor islands as well? Uh, there are, but there are fewer. It's um, um, what's nice here in Waikiki, we've got a market that happily is a little more fluid. Um, and I can actually, we live at one end of Waikiki, my office is at the other end. I am going through Waikiki multiple times a day, uh, seven days a week. So I'm in a good position to see what's happening. I pick up intel on the street, oh, in a coffee shop. And you've got the eye for it. I mean, you this can see it. this. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I, and I know different people who either are in management position of the hotel or owners of hotels. So, so I pick up some, uh, some nice intel and I do recon as I'm moving around and say, oh, okay, and I'm working on one or two right now that are just really unbelievable diamonds in the rough, and I'm looking forward to seeing if I can. So if somebody together. wanted to do something in Waikiki, yes, they should pick up the phone and call you, and you might have some ideas for them? I might have some ideas, yes, yeah. absolutely. I, and, and, and I do get calls routinely. Oh, I, I think good. what impresses me is my father's creativity. I mean, he knows who I could keep, like the back of his hand, and has known all these properties and can see a vision for them that no one else can. You know, and sometimes you have to have that eye to mm -hmm. see those opportunities because yes. sometimes they're they got cobwebs and overgrowth yes. and all oh kinds yes. of stuff on it, and you got to look beyond that and see where it's at. <laughs> and I guess Jane, you you've had some real hands-on experience with this too, going through the renovation exactly. process. Exactly, and the renovation process addressing the neighbor island situation. Um, uh, renovating hotels and these hotels uh, their age all need renovation now of some sort and not just uh, putting lipstick on them uh, it's a it's a whole the whole thing the, the piping systems and mechanical systems and a so forth as well as the pretty things you know we, and may, we may have to have a show where we just talk about renovating and how to get these things <laughs> going but we have run out of time we've run out of and time I'm so sorry but we have so much yet to talk about and and We'll have part two coming up. <laughs> All, right. All right. But this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we just spent the last 30 minutes talking with the Tana Boets about the hotel business in Hawaii. And it looks like we've got an exciting future ahead of us. Until next week, aloha. <laughs>